We have a very special podcast on Sent and Bent today. My dad, you guys have probably seen him in the uh, jet boat video where he was like, oh yeah, no, don't worry about it. I'm going to take it really easy. And then immediately just dump the throttle. Full so, throttle. <laughs> Full throttle Carl. That's yeah. what we call him. So that was a yeah. great introduction of my dad on the show, but now thought we'd have you on. We just... Uh, Ethan drove you around in the Bronco. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if you go back even farther on the channel, Carl drove Lamborghinis with us at SEMA. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I remember that video. Her. That was a highlight. I, I, I have a picture of that in the living room. Uh -huh. I still charge that picture. It was a lot of fun. That was a great day. <laughs> And we got to do it for free, thanks to Grindheart. That was yeah. even better. <laughs> that was better. <laughs> yeah, it made it, it made it fun and easy. And yeah, we've been able to do a lot of pretty cool things. And nobody died. Nobody crashed. Well, right. we need to go. I was just thinking we need to go back to SEMA and do that again so that Will can drive a Lamborghini. Oh. But we need to not tell them. Oh, yeah. Like, we, we need to hope that the company that rents us the cars doesn't look doesn't at my driving history. Because they'll be like, no. You get the Miata. And I'll be like, no, please. <laughs> well, not like, just your driving history. If they see you on our channel, like, at all, they'll be like, mm, I don't know if this guy should be driving our Lamborghinis. <laughs> the Lambos are V10s. And something about driving on a track where you don't have to worry about police, blue-haired yeah. ladies in Buicks. Oh, no. You, you know? Those <laughs> ones, oh, yeah. Here, you don't have to worry about none of that stuff. Cops, it's just, mm -hmm. it's just fun. You can just Open go full out, full throttle. You tend to do that a lot, actually, Carl. Every time I've seen you drive in anything, but the but the Lambo is it's a different kind of sound. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. It's pretty cool. Very it's like a Harley. It's a, it's a different. It's a unique sound. It's mm. a very unique sound. Yeah. And you guys yeah. did the Ferrari, right? You guys, you guys both did. The no, Ferrari. he went back and did the Ferrari with his wife. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So you kind of um, started me on this trajectory whatever this is <laughs> i'd say <laughs> you're the one who got me on motorcycles before i could walk and all that <laughs> i got two good stories about that you want to hear them yeah. yes <laughs> well, that's what we're here for. will definitely wants i, I have I not heard of any of this one yeah. oh really you haven't so. heard any of them yeah i well, want to hear all i got more stories than we got time for I'll oh. tell you. but the four the four age four motorcycle story is a good one so when Edwin was 10 months old, he'd point at my bike and he'd say, up, up, daddy. And I put him on the, I put him on the tank. He grabbed a little bar across. And the only thing he didn't want to do is guess what? What? Quit. Oh. <laughs> he still does that. <laughs> you get him on anything and he'll just go forever. And his little Stroke. hands are red. And I said, honey, we got one more, one more time, dad. One more lap. One more lap. So he did another lap. So. He was 10 months old and did that. Then he said, when can I get my own bike? I said, you can't ride a two-wheeler. He said, you have to be able to ride a two-wheeler before you can ride a motorcycle because you have to know how to balance. And so the, the sad part about the story is I went away with some guys to New York for a conference. And when I came back, one of my, can I say, asshole students? Yeah. Anyway. You say whatever you want. <laughs> he, uh, he taught my son how to ride a two-wheeler while I was gone. So when I got home, I had to... So it was perfect because he showed me that he, that he could ride the two-wheeler and we went to the Yamaha shop. We got a PW50. And when he first got on it, he rode it 30 or 40 yards, hit a stump, went right over to oh. him. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? He got back on it. I fired it back up and he got back on it. I thought he's going to be okay. Yeah. That was, so that was that age was four. <laughs> so wait, what is a two-wheeler? He's talking about a bicycle. A like, bicycle. Oh. You know, because when you're a little kid, you have no. a tricycle and then you have a bicycle. Yeah, he couldn't. He could, no, no, no training wheels. He had to know no how to ride training, a no training So wheels, he had yeah. to learn how to ride a bike before Without, he could drive a no, motorcycle. Yeah. Okay. Right. And what they would do is they, they put me on the bike without the training wheels yeah and like to give me the momentum they would run and push me across the oh floor. It was inside <laughs> that like, is sketchy it was like 10 at night and like i was just growing up with what 12 we had 10 that lived in the house yeah, yeah 10 teenage boys <clears throat> and they would just like all dopey rally alcohol. on me boys. all day <laughs> oh dude <laughs> like, strap me in like uh, little power wheels toys like with like blankets around it and just like throw me into the wall like <laughs> really not a lot has changed i think it's worth clarifying at this point that edwin doesn't have like 10 brothers oh yeah uh, his parents ran a uh, you know a boarding school for troubled teens so the, these kids were all teenage drug addict alcoholics they were very energetic and so when i would tire out the, the cool thing is we live with 10 teenage boys when I would tire out, push him around, then another one would take over, then another one would take over. And he, he'd do it for hours anyway. So it's <laughs> <laughs> unsurprising. <laughs> Worked out really well. When was I old enough to start doing wheelies on the bars, though? That's, that's like some of my first memories are like you would do wheelies with me oh. on the bars. 
Oh, that's a great story. That, that's my favorite, my favorite married story. This is a good married story. So Ed was three years old. Mom's gone, so that means we're doing laps. And so mom was gone, and what I noticed is every time we made this little track, it's kind of like your little track here on Lear's a lot better. But we had a little track with a, with a little tabletop on it, and when I'd hit the thing and gas it, and do a wheelie, he just giggled and laughed and just loved it. So I come down and do another lap and hit the do the wheelie, do the wheelie. So why not give a little bit too much wheelie? And when I came down, his little three year old arms couldn't hold that up anymore. Oh no. And so he went down like this and he hit his nose on the bar, the, the bar that goes. <laughs> oh around. no. So I'm like, oh I'm of course I'm very worried about me. I'm not worried about him. I'm very, very worried about me because I'm gonna get my ass chewed for sure. This is gonna be bad. There was blood everywhere. So I thought, okay, this is cool. So he quit crying. I got him in got him off the got him off the bike, got him got him in the tub, got him all cleaned up, threw threw his stuff in the in the hamper there and got him all cleaned up and I thought, oh, this is okay. So by the time my mom came home, not only not by the time his mom came home, not only was he clean, but the bleeding had stopped there. So I thought, I'm I'm in the I'm in the clear, right? So the boss goes Mom goes, what happened? I'm like, ooh, she already knows. I'm like, we went for a motorcycle. She goes, what happened? So I'm like, ooh. So oh, I decided no. not to lie. I just went with it. I said, you know what? So I, told, I told her the story. I said, God asked me, but how did you know? And she says, the bloody shirt was right on top of the hamper. She saw the blood <laughs> on the shirt. So he was three years old and I got in trouble. Yeah, all you had to do was do the laundry and you would have got away with I, it. I would have been, been clear if I would have just done the laundry. One simple mistake. <laughs> what, was, what was cool about your crashing and blood and all that stuff, you had blood a lot of times before you turned five, but... You never cared, you know. It's like you'd cry, you do your thing, and then you were like ready for another lap. It was never, it was never like, a, oh well, I got hurt, I'm done, you know. Yeah, I remember. I think I had the the eighty. Was it the four stroke? The yep. second bike, PW eighty. Someone had dug a trench for a power line. Oh no! And didn't tell us it wasn't marked or anything. By the cabin, on and the I was just a little kid, like going about, like. Oh open. no! And as fast as an eighty goes, that's how fast I was going, and I just disappeared. I was behind him. All of a sudden, he was gone. I mean, just like I was just at the bottom of this trench, oh. and I wanted to. I was like dancing around, and I was like, "Dad, we gotta keep going. We gotta keep going." But we couldn't figure out how to get my bike out of this giant trench. It's like I just fell into a moat. It was the most bizarre. <laughs> you fell on. Ever. You fell into a moat at full speed. There was, yeah. on there was a, a two by twelve right there, but he missed the two by twelve. We had, oh. I didn't think you could ride over it, but you have to hit the two by twelve. <laughs> how wide was it? Because like, it, it, like. Yeah, did you just really like fall fall in? Otherwise, you hit it and like launch it over probably the other what, side. Like it's three backhoe scoops wide. Yeah, it was, oh, for, okay. yeah, it was for a, it was for a yeah. four inch no, I sewer went, line. So. Yeah, uh -huh. I jumped in, hit the wall. Oh, and just, <laughs> dude, I would not be dancing yeah. around if I, I did that the, at full speed. The visor thing off my helmet just. Boom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a few of those. It was fun. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty solid. <laughs> That's hilarious. So we got the tree stump story. We got the bloody story. We got that. Oh, the strawberry story. Now you're on your own bike. <laughs> the strawberry story. So we're going through the, the uh, what do you call the uh, uh, enchanted forest in the road. And he was humming. <laughs> he had it pinned. And it had a... Well, that was the day you took the governor off, right? Yeah, the governor. <laughs> I thought he didn't need the governor anymore. So he's got it literally, he's got it literally pinned. And he crossed up and went over the handlebars. And oh. he got a strawberry, we call it, on his elbow there. And, and uh, he, he, wanted to, he wanted to ride back home. I said, honey, you know, we can quit if we want to quit, but you got to ride your motorcycle home because I can't ride my bike and your bike home. You got to ride your bike home. And he goes, okay. So he got his bike. Of course, by the time we got to the, the, the back to campus, he didn't want to quit anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> you were, initially, you were like all done for that day. You are done. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. How many little motorcycles have you had, Edwin? I had the 50, the 80. Oh, you know what I should tell the story? The, the, the bigger tabletop that I built on Hope. Should I tell oh, that story? Yeah. Real quick. This is a great story because he was 12 by then. He'd, <laughs> he'd, he'd gone up to the YZ85, which was a whole different monster than the little four stroke little mm -hmm. beaters he had before that. So that was a really nice bike. The problem was, Dad's ego, the problem was, we were hitting the, we were hitting the, uh, the tabletop, and I noticed that he was landing farther away than I was. So I'm like, son, do me a favor and check, what, check my, my distance here. I had 24 feet, right? He had 27 feet at 12 years old. So oh, was, my gosh. I'm like, oh, I knew he was going to pass me, but I think he was going to do it before he became a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> he kept making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And then 
by I had a dozer there. Yeah, and then that's when Lane and I got into like freestyle motocross for like a couple months. <laughs> and and broke was, we were trying Supermans, like going completely off the bike, hanging on the handlebars, you know, and uh-huh. then getting back on. And then the first one I landed, I did a little victory round. Oh no. <laughs> And just wheelied across the field to hit a rock like this oh, big. Oh, no. And then my leg hit, and the bike just went boosh and wiped out my leg. Oh, my gosh. And then I called my mom, and we'd only been there for like 20 minutes, and normally we ride until dark. And so I was like, hey, mom, because she really freaks out when we get hurt. Like, she's not about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I was like, hey, can you come pick us up? Like, it's a little, like, muddy today. Like, we're not feeling it, whatever. And so she stopped, but there was, like, this long driveway and a gate. And she didn't want to open the gate. So, so you had to walk across. Highway. And so I called her again. I was like, hey, could you come all the way down to where I am? And I was on a shovel. Because like, your shovel like, I couldn't put any weight on my foot because it was broken in three <laughs> places. But I was like shoveling up to the car. And then she was like freaking out. And then we went home and we were playing a motorcycle video game. Because <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to go to the doctor. But then it really started hurting. And she came up and it was like swollen like three times the size of my leg. Oh, dude. Then we went to the doctor. But that's the only broken bone. I think that's the only broken bone you ever had all, the, all yeah. years riding. I smashed a few fingers skateboarding, that's, uh, but that's about it. Four to 30. So that's 26 years, one broken bone. That's not bad. That's yeah. a premium track record. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so what's funny is my... Speaking of first motorcycles, my first bike was a PW80. Oh, cool. But I was like 12 because I I, I don't think I paid for the whole thing, but I paid for like half of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was what I could, you know, what I could afford. But I was like already kind of too big for a PW80, but I tipped it over backward trying to wheelie while test driving it when I went to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't see it, but like, <laughs> so I was just like riding around their yard. They had like a little track and I like went around a corner and like up a little bit of hill and I tried to, of course it didn't have much power. So I had to like really yeah, lean really into it to, to wheelie and then it just went, <laughs> I was like, eh, well, that's embarrassing. Oh, well, I was going to buy it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's like if I wasn't, I was sure. Yeah. <laughs> Those, but, those PWs yeah. were reliable bikes. Because Edwin, uh-huh. Edwin wrote it for two years. My daughter wrote it for four years. I gave it to a friend of mine, and his kid used it for three years. And I said, hey, has anybody changed the oil yet? Because I don't think anybody did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. That original oil, it's yeah. breaking oil in it still. Right. Breaking oil, and it went that long? <laughs> it did fine. Well, that is there's ridiculous. A, Carl, have you heard of the, uh, there's a triangle mm-hmm. of um, power, reliability, and low cost. And the, uh, the idea is you can only pick two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the PW80, so PW80 doesn't have the power. And reliable. It has yeah. absolutely no power. No power. <laughs> it always started. First kick of the season. Yeah. I mean, it was just amazing. It was just an amazing bike. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. We had a lot, it was of, fun. A lot of fun. It was, it was well worth it. It's funny whenever you run into people and they're like, oh, what is your first memory? You know, like, do you remember, like, I don't know, like being held by your mom or like stuff like that? It was like all of my first memories are on a dirt bike. Like I don't remember anything non dirt bike related <laughs> until I was like six. I think all we did was ride dirt bikes every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Because uh, if if you were busy working, then I was riding with a student. <laughs> it's pretty impressive to trust your five year old just riding around with a random teenager. But crash with Eric once. Remember that? That was really bad. You were doing the gas. He let you do the gas. Yeah, that one I don't remember. Oh, yeah. he let you do the gas. He was in a corner. Of you. <laughs> I would Edwin never did. let Edwin do Edwin. the gas. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, no. He just full throttle. It, it, it washed out, and he felt, and he was so apologetic. I'm like, hey, it was Edwin's fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, we got a whole list of stories you wanted to tell, right? Oh, that was the, well. The well, the, the, they're not they're not all dirt bike stories. They don't have they, to. Be. They don't have to be. Can all I dirt tell bikes. the twenty two story? Yeah, that's another good married story too. You, you guys will get a kick out of this because it's a good married story. So <laughs> the was, way you say this makes it sound like you're not still married. Which <laughs> yeah, absolutely. you obviously are. <laughs> same, same woman, same woman, <laughs> yeah. same mom. So uh, I decided it was time for everyone to get his first firearm because he was 12 and it made sense. And I think we get him a 22, breach load, simple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Little, you know, keep with my guns. Not going to give to him to hang out with his friends or whatever. So, no, my parents did. <laughs> I got my first gun when I was like 11, and oh, they just right. let me roam free in the forest. Oh, <laughs> oh. we were 
we were a little we were a little more careful than uh, <laughs> probably a good thing. But but Mama was against it. She thought everyone was too young, and so I went. Oh, yeah, I just usually I, I've been married thirty five years. I'm still happy, so I just we I just do what she wants to do, and then we were fine. Hmm. So so I'm not going to do it. So I'm also the I'm also the coach of the little league team. Should I tell the story about the little league? That that. that yeah, I should tell the story about that. Yeah. It's a great story. <laughs> Set it up. <laughs> really pissed me off. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm a little league coach, and it, it, we had a we had a, a season where it, it either went one or the other. Some years I was a coach, we didn't win a game all season. It, we just lost every game. Was just show up, have fun, whatever. Then we have the seasons that go like this, where we lost one game all season because our star pitcher went on vacation. I was really bummed. Anyway, <laughs> we, lost, we lost one game all season. We were all... Terrible. This game was like imported from California. It was like a whole head taller than anyone. And he could throw like an 80 mile an hour fastball when we were eleven. He struck out one of my he struck out one of my high school students at age eleven. Oh struck him my out. gosh. <laughs> imported from California. Yeah, well he just like his mm. parents moved here for yeah. a job or whatever. You guys as good as a team. And he was too. like, Yeah, are you guys in the Babe Ruth League? And we were like, What's that? It's like this paid <laughs> league in California. It's like <laughs> He was an awesome pitcher. Yeah. Okay, so. That's why we're doing so well. So we missed, <laughs> we were playing one other team. And the last game of the season was one other team that only lost one game all season. So there's no playoffs or anything. But as it turned out, the last game of the season was two teams that only lost one, one game all season. So it was like, this is going to be to decide who's the best best, right? So all season long, nobody, if they have a deal, if you hit the back fence, it's, it's inside the park HR, period. You don't have to even run the bases. You do run the bases. But if it hits, if it hits fence... You're, it's a home run. Yeah. So all season long, nobody had hit the fence. So Edwin says to me, Dad, what happens if I hit the fence today? I'm like, hey, you hit the fence today, and not only will I get you that 22, but I'll take all the heat from Mom. Thinking there was a 1% chance that this is going to happen, right? <laughs> and I suck. There's oh, no oh, way this oh, could oh, actually oh, happen. <laughs> if he got out of the infield, we were doing good. <laughs> Sometimes he did. But this, so he gets his first at, at that first pitch, crack and you could hear by this sound i'm like that's gonna hit the flipping fence <laughs> and sure <laughs> it did <laughs> so it's got it's at the park hr we won the game by the way which also was good uh, so afterwards we go to pizza we have pizza night and i thought you know this is the deal what i'm gonna do is because i'm thinking how i can save my butt so like what i'm gonna do is we're having pizza and stuff we're gonna be hanging out so if, <coughs> if he doesn't mention it i'll just write off and then it'll give me a chance to work mom into the whole thing i made the deal and whatever i gotta keep my word and whatever <clears throat> and so this means one word as soon as we get in the truck, he closes the door. He says, so about that gun? I'm like, we're going right now. We went to Walmart. We got the gun. <laughs> we bought it. The whole way home, I'm going over my head. Okay, now she's going to say, I told you not to buy the gun. Why? I'm going to say, hey, I made an agreement. Blah, blah, you know, I can't be mad at my word. But I got all this fight going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth. So we come home, and I, and I tell her, I said, I said, Laura, this is what happened. She goes, yeah, okay. I'm like, Okay, I want to fight. What do you mean? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're all trapped. You're all ready. You're ready to go. You have all your arguments lined up. <laughs> so we still got the 22, and we never had a problem with the 22. You're always yeah, very you go. good, always responsible. Yeah, we did that. So and I didn't realize that that was the most American story ever until I married an Argentinian and he told that story. <laughs> and she was like, baseball, Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like, I if, was thinking if anybody's <laughs> watching this from other countries, they're like, wait, you just went to the Walmart yeah, the and bought a gun store. for your 12 year old. Like, <laughs> Cash and carry. Yeah, normal. No, no waiting. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, you nope, just, just walk in, buy the, the gun, gun leave. and leave. Yeah. And the ammo for it yep. at Walmart. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Crazy. Was, was so growing up funny. in Idaho. Good, we could have drive by on the way home. We could have if we wanted. To. <laughs> <laughs> you were always good with the gun, though. You still. Were. Yeah, it was fun. I learned a lot of things really early, and around the same time you were really. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I. I don't. I don't know exactly. I was 11 or 12 when I got my first gun. I had a BB gun before that, but mm. that doesn't really count. That doesn't count. Know, did and, I have uh, a BB gun even? You had airsoft stuff. Okay, so that's pretty oh, okay. close. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, basic. it's it's, it's plastic the same bullets. As a BB gun. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. I was eleven or twelve, and yeah, my, uh, you know, got my first. It was tw you know a little twenty-two rifle. But yeah, I was thinking about this just the other day. Like single was it was a breech single load? Yeah, yeah, single single shot. It actually had an interchangeable barrel, so you could put a four ten shotgun barrel on it too. Oh, that's really cool. Um, <laughs> nice. two, two different barrels. Uh, the shotgun. You could put a really shotgun used. barrel on it. Yeah, it's that's still just sick. one. You, you break it open, yeah. put one bullet in, and then yeah. That is wow. crazy. But, I've never even seen something like that. And it uses the same like hammer. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Um, <laughs> that is cool. Anyway, yeah, it was a pretty cool little gun. But yeah, I was just thinking about it the other day that like. 
um, just how much has changed, uh, it, you know, culturally since then, like that no parent in the, it, at all would, would just get their gu- kid a gun. I mean, getting your kid a gun. Yeah. That's still normal, but just completely unsupervised. Like Aza and I used to just traipse all over this entire mountain with guns <laughs> and at it, the it, age of like 11 or 12. <laughs> Totally unsupervised. Were you just like shooting squirrels or something? Yeah, or? or just whatever, you know, wandering around in the woods, often shooting nothing or shooting like a stick. I think that whatever, just might just like... be like this mountain thing because I got a gun when I was 12 <laughs> yeah. and I did that exact same you're thing. A decade younger yeah. than me. <laughs> you got you you to take, take it out by yourself? Yeah, yeah. Really? Maybe it's a tradition. It really is just over the hill. Yeah, it's yeah. just <laughs> over the hill. So, yep. Uh, <laughs> this road just, that's what it is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that your family was gun people. Too. Oh yeah, my family is mountain people. You yeah. know, his like, dad. Yeah, you're even his dad hunts with a here. bow. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty manly. Yeah, yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> nice. What other stories do you have? I feel like you're a man of stories. You oh, should write a book. Oh, I got lots of stories. <laughs> Maybe you should tell the wakeboarding story. The oh, there's still a tube story first. Mm, I want to hear tubing? the like, tube story yeah, and the wakeboarding story. Because <laughs> okay. I feel like they're intense. Edwin was a tuber, and we had mm. a beautiful boat. And now him. he's a YouTuber. And I, mm. Yeah, it's true. That's true. <laughs> it was, he was, he was, he was all, way before YouTube, he was a YouTuber. He was YouTubing. But, uh, <laughs> I'm with Edwin in the tube, and Loretta's driving, who's, again, Miss Press and very safe and all like that. And so Edwin's telling her faster, faster. She's going faster, faster, back and forth, left and right. And, you know, so she does it. So she kicks us all the way over right at the apex of the corner. We hit a boat wake from a cabin cruiser. Oh. And launched, right? Now, Edwin was, what are you, what, a year and a half or something? He had the, he still huh? had the life jacket. <laughs> <laughs> had the, a year and a half gonna be, He old. was like 10. No, between the legs. It goes between the he legs. He was a year and, and a half old? Yeah, the one with the head thing. So if you, if you knock yourself out, keep your head above water and everything. Anyway. <laughs> but the so, little floppy, like the little, you can't even really walk good yet. It was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when we're in the air, I'm watching where he, go, where he goes. And when he lands, he disappears. I'm thinking, this is impossible. You, you don't just disappear. Because it's he was probably underwater for maybe a, a second and a half or whatever. It feels like 20 minutes when it's your son and you're mm. thinking he's dead. You know, and so, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking, waiting, waiting, waiting. And he pops up and he's crying. He's like 20 yards away from me. I swim over to The whole time I'm swimming over, I'm doing my psychotherapy stuff because I was a therapist for years. I'm doing my thing. Oh, he's, oh, he's going to hate this. He's going to hate the boat. He's not going to be. He's going to be afraid of the water. He's going to not want to do anything <laughs> athletic. This is the. This is the end. He's going to say my dad tried to kill me, and uh, <laughs> that's why I'm not dope now. And you know, so, put all the stuff on. The, so I get all the way over to him, and he quits crying. He looks at Daddy. And he goes, "I said, son, are you okay?" He says, "Daddy, hold on tighter." <laughs> he, went another, he went for another run. So, the reason why we awesome. let go because you know if he was the one holding the tube down. Yeah. Yeah. So when we hit the boat, he ripped off, and, and so the just tube just went whoop. Yeah. yeah. He was like, yeah. We don't weigh anything. <laughs> yeah. You flew. You 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 were launched. Yeah. <laughs> you probably you probably forty pounds in or fifty pounds if that. I well, thought you were gonna you're say he was like twelve. Probably not even that much. I would guess. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he was much older than one yeah. when you were like, oh, yeah, he was one and he flew across oh. the waves. Now tell the, the mature story. The mature story about the mature boat story. The mature boat story. Okay. Huh? My friend Pat comes from Montana and he wants to go skiing. He's a skier, not a wakeboarder. So we put the, the wake thing up and you know, it's really flat. It was perfect. So we're riding, we're riding. He came over late, though. So we're, we're out there pretty late. It's like 9 o'clock, 9 30. But he's basically still legal. And so Space Pat, Pat drops off, and I could tell because, you know, he, the rope was empty. And so I'm looking around for him, looking around for him. I'm like, where the hell? I don't, I don't see where he, So we drove around, we drove around, and we finally found him. And Edward says to me, he says, Dad, do you think it's time to call it at night? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Well, he I'm was, like, he, we dropped him for like 20 minutes. We were looking for him, and 20. it was just getting oh darker Oh, my and darker. gosh. He literally took off the ski and was holding it up and waving it like this. He was just in the middle of the lake, and our <laughs> lake is giant. Yeah. Like, yeah. Lake Ponderé. And so yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, and then they're like, oh, yeah, da, 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 da. And I was like, Dad, I don't think we should keep going. We can't even <laughs> see him. <laughs> so we called it a night. I thought, gosh, my 12 year old kid, the 10 year old kid's got this figured out. Yeah, if Edwin's <laughs> saying, call it a night. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah, but now people oh. just put uh, glow sticks on their life jackets. Mm-hmm. I got another good story. The 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 uh, the uh, um, what do you call it? The like the oh, the flying tube. 
No, that was a good one. You guys had a flying tube? Yeah, before yeah, the, they the were illegal. illegal. The illegal. Oh, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I tube. wanted one my, so my bad, but I was too the, the, young. The stingray, it had, it had 15 foot wingspan. Yeah, I had and this, you could fly. I had this kid 12 feet off the off the, off the the water. <laughs> Literally 12 feet. Not just bouncing up the water, just flying. flying. Yeah. yeah, we hit 40 on one of those. I was literally like... 25, they say, right on the thing. Don't grab more wave. I'm like, yeah, right, like that's gonna happen. Well, the kite <laughs> tube had this clear thing in the middle. The manta ray was a different one. But the kite tube had a little clear thing right in the middle. And so, like, the 25 speed limit thing, you kind of, like, jump, you fly for a little bit, and then you come back down. So, like, that was cool and all, but that got boring pretty About quick. 40. So I was like, yeah, I just open off. it up. I was flying so high, I could see the boat, like, underneath me. What? So I was worried if I fell, I'd, like, fall onto the boat. Because <laughs> another thing, they say. People died on those things. That's why they had to get rid yeah. of them. Yeah, they say connect it to the ski hole that's mm -hmm. lower right we put it on the tower so we'd get more lift mm. oh so no. we're going on the tower and we're going twice as fast as you should so when i looked down i literally saw the boat through the oh, no. and i was like ah like i don't know what to do like i can't fall but if the boat slows down like i don't know how my inertia is gonna come into play here <laughs> yeah like, how does know. that work because if the boat's slowing down you're gonna like Calm yeah. it. I mean, you were probably no, still it, pretty far behind it. It would just like, yeah, do you have a really effective. long yeah, rope? Normally, you fly like this, but since I was flying so high on the tower, I was like this. Yeah. So if the boat like cut, yeah, no. yeah, like that. right. And I think that actually did is part of the reason. I know someone fell on shore from the air and what? died. What? Yeah, and they like crash someone, landed onto a beach. Yeah, they were Oops. doing it fast. And too close to shore. I mean, oh so they gosh. went like, like if yeah. they're going along by the shore, they probably just went like this because those things like they're not stable. They go up and then they go whoop yeah, and just exactly. eat to the side. So it probably just yeah. catapulted them straight to the bank. I feel like they shouldn't be illegal. They yeah, just, if, like it's. I, I mean, mean the story I've heard, it seems like it's kind of pilot error. Well, I mean, the problem is they can't pilot. make the warnings big enough for people to listen to them. Yeah. Uh, case in point. <laughs> you could have killed me then. Your, your responsible dad, my mature move was, I said, okay, so this is the deal. I'm going to give you a signal. When I do, cut it hard to the right. I'm going to steer to the left and then cut hard to the right. I think we can get it to do a 360. Get it to <laughs> You fell. That would have been yeah. amazing. I didn't have the strength to hold on for the whole 360. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have worked. <laughs> it would have worked. <laughs> we tell the responsible 12 year old story. Okay. We're at the Monarchs. We're on the far side of the lake. We're at the Monarchs. And uh, the Monarchs know, is a great. giant mountain range. Yeah. On the oh, other side yeah, of the right. Lake for context. <laughs> 1,200 feet deep. You got 100 feet off the shore. It's literally 1,200 feet deep. Or 200 feet off the shore. It's like 1,200 feet deep. Anyway, it was flat as glass. I'm like, I'm looking, and it's Edwin and his 12 year old friend, the only other people in the boat. I'm like, oh, this is, well, this water's too flat. I, and so they had, they had, but you'd about had enough. And so I said, you know, I said, you know, son, here's the thing. I said, if you took the wheel, I could get behind the boat. Oh. And he's like, okay. <laughs> so I took the little, I took the, the floaty thing or the bumper thing, yeah. threw it. Threw it, threw it in the water and see how it came back and he ran, did a good job, came around, picked it up. I said, okay, here's the thing. Whatever you do, don't run into me. I don't care how far the, the, the handle gets me. Just don't hit me. So he's like, okay. So I get him in there. I said, oh, if we get stopped by the police, I'll take all the heat. It's my fault. I'll just let me, let me. Let me <laughs> <laughs> I'll do, I'll do. I don't think the cop's going to be mad at the 12-year-old driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was no world where that was going to happen. <laughs> all right. So anyway, he did great. And you know, I crashed a couple times. He came back and picked me up. And then I came home and I told the mom, I told the mom that what happened. She was, she was okay, too. She was okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my friend's mom wasn't cool. Oh, no. <laughs> no she, she doesn't yeah. go anymore. She doesn't go anymore. She yeah. let him go. Which was, was this Lane or Remington? Uh, Remington. Yeah. Oh, His no. Mom was like, mom said, no. <laughs> no more. <laughs> it's like, like, what if something happened to you, Carl? And then you're Edwin's driving the boat. Oh. I'm like, back then it was a $50,000 boat, which was a lot of money for a boat back then. Mm. But yeah, that, that doesn't help her kid get home safely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel to see the connection here. Yeah. yeah. We got home safely. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I guess that's a <laughs> responsible story. That's your responsible story. No, that, that you were responsible. At you were, so you're the responsible. You were responsible enough you're to drive the, the boat. Oh, yeah. I see. I thought you did great. I, I, I don't feel like there's very many of these stories that have Carl being responsible. No, I don't think right. any of these stories have anything to do with responsibility at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I. 
Who does for a living? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no, I'm not saying it's a great. bad thing. It's great. <laughs> Disconnecting from responsibility is a great thing to do. <laughs> That's Will? Will's no. MO. <laughs> no. <laughs> Down. That, that's another good responsible story. Oh. I wanted to go to SEMA for 20 years. We were years. doing donuts in the parking lot. <laughs> I don't know if that's a responsible, <laughs> responsible I mean, there's, I was there the whole time. There was nothing overly irresponsible that happened. No, no, no. Let's talk about, about how we got there. Let's talk mm. about how we got Oh, okay. Because I, you know, you can't buy a ticket to SEMA. You can't just buy it and go. So I always wanted to go. So I thought, you know, if you have to be in the business, I'll just have some cards made up saying Carl's detailing or whatever. I'll make some kind of, some think of scandalous ways to get into SEMA. And I do this for the 20 years or 25 years or whatever. And never, never, nothing ever pans out. And so Edwin calls me one day and says, hey, Dad, do you want to go to SEMA? I'm like, uh, only my whole life. Some people want to go to Europe. Some people want to go to, you know, want to go to France. They want to go to Egypt. I, I wanted to go to SEMA. You know, <laughs> in, in Vegas. I don't gamble. I don't drink. And I, I want to go to Vegas. Anyway, I wanted to go to SEMA. And so he says, you want to go? So I said, well, how how how'd that work? Well, we just need you to drive and put these two cars in the back, little, little cars. Yeah, barbie car and barbie yeah. Jeep. Yeah. And so he says, yeah. I said, well, what's it going to cost? Well, they're not going to say anything. Like, well, what's the lodging going to be? Well, they're covering lodging. What about what about the food? Well, the food's gonna be covered. I'm like, well, so I have to pay his gas. He goes, no, I pay for your fuel. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it, it, this, I like the story because I tried a, a million ways to scam it for 25 five years, and then my son offers me a free trip. All in. I got to do is turn the key and show up. You know, so it was, it was, it was yeah. and then and then while we were there. This kid asked him for his autograph, and I just got such a kick out of that because <laughs> that uh, yeah. he's so humble. Yeah, I said, I said, son, does this happen all the time? He goes, well, it's uh, how many times has it happened today? Four years. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, I think that was that was like the first time I signed an autograph. I think. Yeah. Or did I mean, we do we, a gambler before then with a few fans? I mean, maybe, but we I don't know really because gambler was pretty channel, early on. Yeah. yeah I don't At know. gambler, we had like what forty thousand subscribers. I mean, the first something? time I think we had less than twenty, and then the second time. Yeah. Uh, well, the second time was with the Jags, so we were hard. Well, no, we were there. Yeah, and we would have signed some autographs the second time, yeah. but then we had like a hundred and some. Still, still certainly not used to yeah. it. And then SEMA was like a horde of car people. Like it was hard yeah, to go I mean, anywhere. Yeah, because I mean, that's the whole environment. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> the place, it was heaven. Yeah. yeah. And by I that walk, point, we were almost somewhere around half a million subscribers at that point. Yeah. So it was I walked 12 and a half miles in one day there and never went outdoors. In except, SEMA? Except, yeah, yeah ex except for the. <laughs> except for the Burnout, yeah. the and he didn't even thing. see everything yeah. in twelve and a half miles. Yeah, Aza did. Aza was with you for a lot of it too, right? He he, he walked all day and said he didn't see everything. He, he walked all day every I, day. Like yeah. Aza <laughs> went and saw. Like he tried was, to see the entirety of it in it's a, it's four a, days. He couldn't see every boot. <laughs> it's it's I, I, after after that day, it was just. Do you see the tank? I'm like the tank. How to miss the tank? <laughs> the yeah. rip saw with oh, like yeah. lights everywhere and like a crazy. I never saw the rip saw either. I, I mean, I didn't, <laughs> well, we had guys, less time to roll. Yeah, because we had to be at the booth. You, you guys know, were in the booth for a lot of the you time. Know, getting yeah. attention and whatnot. Yeah, that, was, that was a great time. It was really good. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. We Remember need to go back. we backed the Barbie Jeep up against that like actual monster truck? Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you, what, did, what, you, did a, you did a donut in the, in the regular in the Camaro? people were walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we just kind of like cleared out a spot and did some donuts. Yeah, like, like on the last day, you yeah. kind of had yeah. to. <laughs> that was kind of yeah. fun. Then so we did the, some wheelies in the Barbie Jeep on the way out. Oh, yeah. Remember uh, um, um, Cars and Cameras? Uh John, oh, yeah. like he was like, oh, I don't. We were like the whole time he was like, which one's better? We were talking about like whether the Camaro or the Barbie Jeep was like better, and he's like, I really think the Camaro is better. Mm. And then I did wheelies in the Barbie Jeep, and he's like, well, you didn't tell me it did wheelies. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, that's obviously better. It does yeah. wheelies. That's my philosophy. I was like, I thought that everything. was obvious. Yeah. I mean, the Camaro <laughs> does wheelies too. It just doesn't do them on streets so much. Yeah, it but does. You cut some good ones down there. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The Camaro is a good looking car though. That was. Yeah. A good, it was. It was These days, it's pretty thrashed. I mean, yeah. the Camaro's fun, though. I was hitting some whoops on our last adventure. You're the it's only crazy. person who's ever thought the Camaro was actually fun. I like it. It, just, it wants so just loud, rip you apart. I love driving things that just want to just destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hit the wall, right? No, that was Sam. No, that was oh, Sam. Sam hit the wall. Okay. Yeah, Sam hit the wall. We didn't even... I guess we did show it in that video, but we didn't even show the bad angle. Like... Yeah, that was scary. That, that was, was the worst with Sam got the was scary. ever, for sure. Yep, that yeah. was the worst uh, thing we've... Uh, you had a kind of scary one. I mean, you're going pretty slow, but it's Which? still when the colonel fell right on your leg. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty bad. Um, it was like... How'd you like get outside the colonel? How'd you get out? 
Well, I flipped she over. got ejected. Yeah. And okay. it landed on, like, the full weight of its 700 pounds landed on my shin. Uh, I don't know how my leg didn't break. It was purple from the middle of my shin all the way to my toes. Yeah. I was, like, just Ow. pulling out a camera, and I saw him go around the corner, and then I just... I heard it more <laughs> than I really oh, so saw didn't, it. So didn't yeah, it. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. even filmed. Yeah, because we it were kind of over on this side, and I was like on the driveway, and so like I couldn't see if he was okay or not. But like we always talked about, like, oh, you never want to roll the kernel. Like, well, we're, what, roll and, uh, we weren't kernel even doing be, anything. We weren't like trying to yeah. film anything. I just went around the corner, and um, it, what happened is part of it was that the tires were at like zero psi because the last time we'd driven it was in the snow. It was early spring, mm. so the ground was frozen and slippery. Um, and also the tires were super low. So I just kind of, you know, drifted around the corner, but then because the ground was extra slippery, I spun a little bit more and then the tires were extra soft. So they kind of folded Swole. over and the wheel hit the ground, yeah, the I wheel think, grabbed. and it just boom, flipped right oh. over. But I couldn't see. So like, all <laughs> I know is up into this point, like we've had a lot of conversations, like we should never, never the flip kernel. the kernel. Like it's you too heavy. will get hurt badly. You know, like it's too heavy. It's too awkward. Does that, does that have a roll bar? No. no. And your feet are kind of like in there really weird. Like you just don't yeah. want to roll it. Yeah. So like, that's like everything is like, don't roll the kernel. And then I see him roll it, but I can't see if he's like underneath it or if he got out. Yeah. Okay. So like I ran over there, but like. I was like, you know, when like a thing's walking on a movie, and you don't, see, but don't you look need to see. It's like I didn't want to see, but I'm like, eh. and then you were just like yelling. You're like, I burnt my hand on the exhaust. Or no, that, the exhaust was um, <laughs> that was the, the Barbie. Over, G. No, that was the Barbie Jeep. That was a different. Oh, okay. That was a different. I don't even know what I was saying. On I that think you were just yelling at the. Uh, yeah, I was just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. by the time you got there, I already flipped it back over. But yeah, yeah. No, it the whole that one. Yeah, that one hurt a fair bit. Um, I, uh, cause like I've, I've tried to reconstruct it in my head a lot of times and I still don't really know exactly what angle I flew out of it and what angle. Cause it, it, it squished me like as it rolled, I felt the impact of like my back compressing and being squished be, and then I ejected from it and then it landed on my leg. Oh. It only rolled once. So I don't really know how that all happened, but I think situation. what landed on my leg is the steering wheel, or it could have been the back of the seat, which is equally... It was something rounded, because if it had been something sharp, it would have cut it really bad, but it hit in my, the middle of my shin and then slid down. There's still, like, a dent in the middle of my shin, like, uh, a year and a half later. <laughs> my only bad power wheels crash was... Well, I guess rolling the Camar uh, the first one, the Mustang, off the road. Oh, yeah, that was... The bad. actual road. Well, you were fine, but it could have been bad. Yeah, I just got cartwheeled out of it, and I was wearing sandals I know. you uh, would have been so proud well barefoot and sandals dude that is it's like the sandals that he made those little yeah with the leather you strap. crafted the crafted sandals yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome and then the the one that hurt the worst though was when before you dug out the spot for the garage and we had the tabletop there it yeah. was like this rock pile i think like it was I even jumped. before the tabletop it was just like it was just there that yeah. we hadn't even built a jump you just like <laughs> so there's no real landing yeah. and i jumped it too far to the left so i ran, landed right in the rock pile and it had the little oh. snow blower tires on it yeah, still. And, it just, <laughs> and so i just rolled it down there and then my body like rolled like there's a Over bunch of rocks like this size that are in the rock wall now it was yeah. just a pile of those and i just rolled down and i was just like <laughs> it really wasn't that bad, but that was the most painful. I'm power honestly surprised crash. there hasn't been more power wheels related well, injuries. The scooter like, one, the, the yeah, the scooter one. Yeah, the scooter one. Yeah. The, 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 the only yeah. one that ever scared me was the scooter. Yeah, my doctor said I'll never be the same. <laughs> I feel like three different wicked. doctors have told me that actually. That was wicked. That, that, was, that, was, that, was, yeah. that was that was a serious injury. Yeah. Serious injury. Well, yeah. and the weird thing about that one is it looked like nothing. Like I, yeah, you look like, you're like Edwin off. was yeah. just going up the hill, and then he was like, "Ow!" And I was like, "You're not supposed to stick your yeah. leg in the clutch." And then he was not walking for a long time. That was the worst but pain it, I've ever. It looked been. like rug burn, and I was like, "Oh no, that yeah. sucks." Just get your. Calf. Not most people can say you're not supposed to stick your leg in the clutch. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did tell yeah, him before. Yeah, he did. Fair. He's like, "Yeah, you'll be fine. Just don't put your leg down." And in the clutch, I got to the top of the hill, and like. The bike kind of slowed down, and I put my foot down. Well, yeah, it doesn't mean the clutch didn't slow no. down because yeah. it's on a belt, so it was like yeah. spinning like however many thousand oh. times a second, and I just got <laughs> just meat grinded ripped. by it. Yeah. 
Yeah. That, that scooter, I never got to drive that scooter. I want to like good. craft That's it back good. together and drive it. It's been it. disassembled yeah. in so many ways. Oh, so it fortunately, needed a, it needed a guard. Oh. Well, yeah. I made one right yeah, after that, and it was really always cool. the plan. It was just the first test drive. Yeah. I was like, first test drive. I could have gone without doing that. <laughs> yeah, that well, you, know, you should tell the Barbie, you, the Barbie car story where you almost went off the road on Highway 200. Oh, that was a good one. We oh, that was where even. I did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was yeah, the, the very, first, was that very you, first was test. Was you driving? Yeah, it was, was the first test drive on pavement. Yeah. And the very first Grind Hard video. Yep, first Grind Hard video ever. I you was, almost went off the road? Oh, so yeah, I he almost was, went off the road. It was where it's like a cliff down to the railroad tracks. Inches away. Yeah, like I, I was drifting around in it, and uh, the brakes were super touchy at the time. I don't actually remember if it was brakes or not, but yeah. So I was drifting around, and I tried to drift one way, and it kind of didn't go, and then I ended up spinning out the other way. And like I spun out and slid backward to the edge of the road, and then past the edge of the road. Oh, no. And stopped on like a little... I mean, I also ran out of momentum, but like the back tire was just on this little, little bitty rock right before it just goes 80 feet down to the train oh, tracks. My gosh. <laughs> and when he hopped out of it, he like... Like balanced hot, because like, <laughs> if you got out of it wrong, it might just go go. Yeah, like literally, there is this, the back axle on the rock. Like if this is the cliff, like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that would yeah. have been terrible. And the film yeah. was perfect too, because you see exactly what happened. In yeah, the film. yeah, yeah. That was we should just one. upload that clip in the raw. Just yeah, like, grind just, hard almost didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> that would actually make a great like short. That would you know, be a for, good like Instagram, Instagram or yeah. something. YouTube shorts and all that. <laughs> That'd be funny. That'd be a good. Oh man, good clip. Yeah. yeah, it's been a good ride. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's had a lot of. Surprisingly, we're all still alive. Yeah. Yeah, and all all our digits, everything. Yeah, I've only had stitches once from yeah. from working. Nice here. At, you know, doing was that the do. grinder one? Yeah, the grinder yeah. with the kneecap. That was the grinder was the to the stitches. knee. <laughs> I mean, my thumb really oh. should have had stitches too, but at the time, we were still not making yeah. any money, so I just was, <laughs> yeah. didn't feel like getting stitches. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dad? You talked about how you raised me, but you're raised pretty similar. I feel. <laughs> I had to wait till I was eight before I got my first motorcycle. Wow. So, wow. A whole measly <laughs> eight been, years. I Struggles have, real. <laughs> I, I might have been nine. And my dad had the same kind of oh, deal no. your dad did as far as, you know, I said, can I have a mini bike? And he says, yeah, sure. I'm like, cool. He's like, well, what are you, you going to earn it? I'm like, I'm eight years old. Let's just get a job. And I, the penny saver, you take this little newspaper thing, a little free ad thing, you, you put it on a door and they give you a penny per one, right? So I paid 65 bucks oh. on that mini bike. I tell you what, never spent one day out in the rain. You know, so I knew, exactly, <laughs> I knew exactly what that mini bike cost. And then I got one with a jack shaft. I got a Taka with the jack shaft. And that was, I thought, I was, I thought it was downtown then. Cause What's that, a... Jack shaft? Is no, I know what a jack shaft even knows is. What a mini bike about is. mini bikes, like uh. like actual mini bikes. You know, they have no suspension. Yeah, like okay, a little yeah. hard tail engine and <laughs> okay, yeah. hard tail and hard in the front. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah no, no shock suspension. suspension. Ah. Yeah. And you paid sixty five bucks. Sixty five bucks, but it ran perfect. Oh. You couldn't get the tires for that now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was <laughs> gonna say I almost spent sixty five bucks at Starbucks every morning. <laughs> 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 this would have been this would have been nineteen sixty eight. Oh. <laughs> yeah, my dad. My dad was big on motorcycles. He was a Harley guy, and he had a. He okay. actually was even cooler than a Harley guy because he had an Indian chief back mm-hmm. in the day. That, was, those are premium. Yeah, he was. He was. He was hardcore. It was a lot of fun. We had camping a lot. So did you get into road bikes after that, or have you always been just dirt bikes? I did get into road bikes. Mm. Carl almost died on a road bike. Oh no! It was fun. I had a lot of fun. Oh. for my for my twentieth uh, AA birthday, I got a, a brand new Harley Davidson. Like drove it like well, actually it was in December, so he had to deliver it to my house because it was still on the ground. But uh, it was beautiful. It was a soft tail classic, eighty cubic inch. It was gorgeous motorcycle. The year two thousand. It was in two thousand. It's great. It was a big. It was a big big day. I had a lot of Japanese bikes. Spent a lot of time on the road. Crushed a lot because I was drinking, driving, and a teenager. Mm-hmm. Didn't you total a few ninjas on the highway <laughs> in California? <laughs> Well, they probably weren't even called ninjas back then. It would have just been a Kawasaki, yeah. uh, like, KZ-1000 or whatever, KZ-750. I had a, 900, a Honda 900F, and the big deal back then was the 4 into one They all had two shocks, but mine had conies in the back, mm. which, was like, which was like the Fox of today, you know. Yeah. But uh, that, that, was, that, was, that was a great bike, and they were bulletproof. Yeah, the Hondas, I had a Honda 554. You could... You could do anything that motorcycle, and you could kill it. I think you pee in the gas tank. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was amazing. It was an amazing bike. It was a lot of fun. But you drink it and ride a motorcycle is really, really bad combination. I crashed a yeah, couple that, times. But. That seems like a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah that seems <laughs> not a good idea. Wasn't mom 
driving a ninja when you met her? Yeah, mom had a ninja. She's so funny. <laughs> I still can't imagine that. She, my <laughs> wife, the day we got married, she weighed 107 pounds. She was 29 years old, and she weighed 107 pounds. And she had a ninja, a little 250 ninja. Hmm. But still, I thought, that was pretty cool. I thought, because that, that really was a, I never had, like I said, back in the day, yeah, if you a, wanted a road racer bike, you made your own. You, you couldn't buy one. You know, and uh, and she she got one, so that was fun. She was, she's always, she's still a little bike now. She's a little KX100. She's still Rides it once a year, maybe. Twice. Yeah, <laughs> I think I gotta get her a Saran. I think she'd like that more. It'd be better. Yeah, be better for her. Less it's either off on that one, or it's either off on stinky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we were trying to ride in the snow too last year, and I was like, it's hard to drive a low-powered two-stroke in the snow. Yeah, <laughs> especially if you haven't been riding in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, probably not the best. But well, she was still getting around just fine. <laughs> it was cool. Yeah, she was okay with road bikes until the Harley Deer thing. Then when you're when they close the highway down both ways to land a helicopter on to take you to the hospital, you're having a bad day. Mm. And that was a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell any Harley stories, but that was eight years after I got it is when it went mm. out. Yeah. Yeah. The same bike you got in December. The the one that yeah. was here. Yeah. yeah. Mm. What's a road racer bike? Just, I want just one like, of those. No, he's just talking about like like street bikes. So oh. Like crotch rockets and stuff like oh, that. Oh, okay. But before, I like me some road racing bikes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what though? I tell you, there's a different. It's a different thing because if you like me and you push it, you push it, you push it. I had that 900 F with the four into one, the Coney's, all that stuff. And I literally rode for three weeks, and I thought I'm going to sell this motorcycle. I knew it was. I knew it was going to kill me. It was just a matter of time. That's why I've never bought one. Oh yeah, because <laughs> if it's there, you want to use it's like what that what, 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 what that corner feel like at 140. Let's yeah. let's try it. Yeah, and, and now now <laughs> the bikes that you can buy now. 140 is like second oh, gear, yeah. you know, <laughs> little baby number. Like back in the day, that I think the fastest I ever got my Honda 554 going was probably 90. Yeah, probably the fastest it ever went. Yeah, but uh, well, when I when I realized I was never allowed to own a street bike, I I bought a 78 Honda Goldwing that was completely just like neglected and didn't run, just all pieces and had huge purple fairings on it. And the idea was to turn something and turning it into a cafe racer kind of style bike um so just start, for, start, as a, and start with the gold wing yeah it was yeah. just a fun project like it, it, the point was for it to be ridiculous right um and uh i finished it and it looked really cool and uh, it ended up throwing a rod pretty quickly because the engine had sat out for a really long time <laughs> i got it running but anyway like i drove it like three or four only times ethan, only ethan could kill a honda gold yeah. motor it's the first time i've ever first time yeah, i've ever heard never it. died well that's, like, that's like the problem I couldn't, motor. I couldn't get parts for the inside of it like i was gonna fully rebuild it all I could find was rings, and I had to have those shipped from Canada because no one ever rebuilds that engine. Oh, they're, they they're bulletproof. Yeah. You, 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 you can't break those. When I got it, it was like <laughs> sitting under a tarp with one uh, one of the uh, valve covers off. Like, oh, so yeah, like well, it had been be left for yeah. years. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I drove it like three times, and like I was doing 110 on the 35 zone, uh, you know, on the dirt. And I was like, in a, in, a in a gold wing. And I was like, yeah, I'm not allowed to have a fast bike. If I'm doing 110 in a gold wing. On dirt. Yeah, on dirt. I'm and, like, it's, no. and it's a heavy, heavy yeah, motorcycle. Yeah, I mean, I reduced the weight a lot by getting rid of it. But it's still like. No fairing? The fairing was gone? Yeah, all the fairings were gone. And I wish I don't even have any pictures of it, really. But isn't the remnants of it still in the Yeah, no, the, the chassis is still in there. I yeah. scrapped the engine because it was mm -hmm. toast. But uh, one yeah. of these days, it'd be fun to put a new engine it in it. It would be cool. All the, I painted everything. I bet you could get, like, coated. a crate motor for it. Like, for... No, I know. You can get a used one off eBay. Yeah, or, like, yeah. some sort of motor yeah. for I, it. I could. At the time, it. I didn't really have the money for yeah. it. Yeah. I'd already dumped a bunch of money in it, and I was like, yeah, I'm done yeah. it. But it was a fun project. The responsibility in this room is cringing me out. <laughs> <laughs> you should have started with old CB754 is what you should have started with. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't... The point wasn't to have a good bike that was like you know it, it, easy to drive or anything i just i wanted a, the, the the point was more of the project than Dude, the it cost you a thousand bucks or so is that hmm? there's did it cost you about a thousand bucks the to gold, gold wing oh i paid 500 bucks for it 500 yeah, yeah okay. it was kind it's a of good a deal pile of scrap that is a good but, deal um yeah and then i you know put probably i don't know thousand bucks into it rebuilding it and getting the frame powder coated and everything and then blew it up on my birthday. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's oh, no. it like having a rod come out? It didn't come out. It, oh, just, okay. it just it just that separated be... inside of the... the so sort of like, the rear lock yikes. up and you just... Yeah, it just the locked up, yeah. I was Can't just believe. driving along and it was it's sounded... It's hard to do. Cafe yeah. <laughs> Goldwing. Yeah. Premium. It was a cool-looking bike. 
just get them for a thousand bucks all the time. Just yeah. Get a bulletproof bike for a thousand bucks. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Should we, uh, should we call it? Yeah, I think we should go, uh, go get dinner. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, hungry. Uh, yeah, I'm starving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's eat. Thanks, Dad. We'll yeah. do. Yeah, thanks for all the awesome stories. Yeah, you got to oh. hear some of Will's. Next time, we'll just let you and Will trade stories. Yeah, that'd be oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A a good story idea. trade off. Yeah. <laughs> Will has. Well, hasn't support. had as many years as you, but he's had a lot of swindly situations. Yeah, swindly things. <laughs> he's trying to catch up. <laughs> he is trying to catch up at a rampant pace. Oh, no. oh, oh, like a concerning pace, honestly. Yep. <laughs> at a concerning pace. Oh, no.